Hi, we've just published a new paper on solar flare activity in the journal Space Weather. In this paper, we provide the longest daily solar flare activity record, uh, nearly 90 years of daily dat observations going back to 1937. Uh, it's a collaboration involving uh, observers in the Turkish observatories and the uh, Czech, uh, Czech Republic that have um, been consistently monitoring the sun uh, for solar flares. And with this new data set, we have shown that the, the solar flares that uh, were associated with last year's unusual, uh, the aurora activity in May 2024, were actually the highest solar flares activity on record. But for me, the importance of this record, this data set, is actually the context of what happened before they, uh, they, those observations began. Uh, nearly 80 years before, um, in, in the Carrington-Hodgson event, Richard Carrington was an English astronomer in the 19th century and he was studying the sun uh, as well as uh, doing astronomical observations at night um, and he at the at the time uh, if those of you have watched my the previous talk will have heard me mentioning that german uh, the uh, astronomer heinrich schwab had uh, recently shown that he'd been looking at the sunspot activity and he had been noticing that there was a, a, a roughly 10 year we now to say 11 year cycle in activity where sunspot activity will increase and then decrease in a almost cyclical manner and uh, Carrington had become very interested in that and had started monitoring the sun in fact he'd even visited um, uh, Schwab in uh, 1856 and uh, Schwab had told him, suggested that he investigate this problem of what's called the, the rotation rate of the sun. And Carrington, a, a afterwards from his observations, he had pro, uh, shown that actually the sun uh, is not a solid object as had been assumed. And that uh, it's the, because it's a, a gaseous plasma body the rotation at the equator is of the sun the solar equator is different from the uh, near the poles and so it varies from 25 to 28 days depending on the sun and so to this day this is known as the Carrington rotation but if, from these observations he continued making these sketches of the sunspots and on the 1st of September, 1859, he was doing his usual sketches when he saw this big bright light appearing on, the, on, the, on the, his card that he was sketching the, the sun on and, uh, through the telescope. Initially, he thought to tell us something wrong with the telescope. He tried adjusting it. Then he realized, no, it's, it's appearing, this bright explosion appearing on the sun in the middle of the sunspot. And he tried to get attention in the house. Uh, then he kept taking the sketches, and uh, for uh, after seven minutes, it, it disappeared. Uh, he tried seeing if it would reappear for another uh, hour, but it, it never came back. And um, so he then went uh, traveled up to the Q Observatory to see. If anybody had seen it and nobody had noticed it, but they did notice the Q Observatory was recording magnetic observations. And so they said, oh, at the same time, there was this big massive glitch uh, had occurred at around the same time. And um, then uh, the, he found out that another English uh, astronomer, uh, Richard Hodgson, had also observed something happening. And so the two of them agreed they wouldn't take any further, communicate with each other until they'd written up their own 
notes about it. And uh, so this, they had discovered this was the first, uh, what we now call a solar flare that we have detailed documentation of in real time from the observations. And uh, so it's called the, the Carrington event or the Carrington Hodgson event. Um, and after, in, the, in the days afterwards, there was strange activity. So within 18 hours, well, Q Observatory noticed these massive magnetic spikes were occurring, but all around the world, uh, people were seeing aurora in places that they hadn't seen it before. Like in as far south as in Europe, you were seeing it in Paris, in Rome, in, uh, in America, you were seeing it as far south as Cuba. And the other thing is that this was a time of the telegraphs, uh, telegraph era. So this, the, everyone was communicating across, uh, between countries by telegraph. But the telegraph system pretty much collapsed all around the world. People didn't know what to do for the, for during this magnetic storm. And uh, you were getting other strange activity. So like uh, one, one uh, telegraph observer was getting, uh, he got an electric shock while he was taking his, his uh, setting up his, his the instrument. Uh, the others, they were sparks were leading to fires in Norway, all over, in different obser, obser, uh, you know, uh, telegraph stations around the world. Uh, in some places, though, the it, it, you got even more bizarre things. There was in in Massachusetts, two uh, telegraph operators found that they were actually if they disconnected the telegraph from the battery, they were actually able to communicate using the aurora, the, the magnetic field generated by the aurora. Um, for several hours, they were able to, co to communicate disconnected from the batteries. We haven't had an event like that since, uh, but we have had other uh, magnetic storms and flares uh, have occurred since then, just not as powerful. But we now know a, a lot more about what is happening, what was happening there, and why you had all of these weird connections of the uh, of magnetism, aurora, and uh, solar activity. What we now know is the sun is continually emitting uh, charged particles all all year round. Uh, that and these these particles uh, introduce a magnetic field spread throughout the solar system, which we call the solar wind, and the interactions of the solar wind with the Earth's magnetic field lead to the to the aurora that we have all year round in the uh, Arctic and Antarctic region, but occasionally a sunspot. A giant sunspot uh, group m will sometimes emit a massive explosion, uh, which leads to uh, this big bright light, which is a solar flare. And because uh, we we could then observe that uh, eight minutes later, because uh, Earth is eight light minutes away from the sun, and so it the it travels at the speed of light, but after a, over the next day or two if there is you can often have a coronal mass ejection where the explosion also leads to huge amounts of extra coronal material as uh, being ejected into the solar system and if that travels and towards in the direction of earth when that interacts with the earth's magnetic field you can get these massive uh, storms, magnetic storms, geomagnetic storms that we were talking about. Now, the last year's say uh, low what uh, auroral events were unusual. They we call them a low magnetic latitude aurora. Uh, those are unusual, but they're not completely unusual. Like we've had seven of those uh, events in the last century. Uh, our, our new paper shows that the flare activity 
however, of that May was was very unusual in that it was the greatest uh, since at least 1937. But different estimates are suggesting that the Carrington event was even greater than what we've experienced. Um, and we also, we can use other sciences. So people looking at uh, tree rings uh, are finding that the evidence uh, that looking at cosmogenic isotope ratios in tree rings are showing that there have been other events even greater. For instance, the 774 AD um, event seems to have been a, a particularly large. Um, meanwhile, astronomers that are looking at what we call sun-like stars, which are stars that seem to be similar uh, to our sun, um, they, they've noticed that uh, many sun-like stars will occasionally have a super flare that would put uh, all of the, the Carrington event to shame, you know, as, as nothing. Um, but so the, these things are occurring. So the sun uh, is a, a, occasionally will, will have these flares we're going to have another one in the future. There's got to be, the odds are we will. We don't know when. Will it be in the next decade, the decades after, sometime this century? We don't We don't know. Um, the, this data set we have maybe will help. We're hoping better understand the statistics, but we still don't know. Now, so here's the thing. Society and humanity has lived through events like this before and we haven't been uh, affected it doesn't seem to have had any major harm but we saw what happened to carrington event to all of the telegraph system and what you gotta realize is that carrington event that was 30 years before the first uh, electricity pylons were started being in installed and it, the electricity grids that we have today, they didn't really start being set up till the 20th century. The other thing is that the uh, satellites, the very, the very first artificial satellite that we launched, uh, the, uh, the Russians uh, launched Sputnik in 1857, nearly 100 years after Carrington event. We, society now relies on uh, electricity networks and uh, satellite networks for almost all our needs um, uh, you know like we're very heavily reliant on it uh, but we haven't actually experienced the uh, another Carrington event and we know that uh, solar flares that are smaller in magnitude than Carrington event can and uh, coronal mass ejections can lead to harm to both of those we know that the uh, the Halloween uh, 2003 solar flare led to uh, considerable sh satellites were shut down and stopped working for for hours and hours and uh, some of them just completely stopped communicating and uh, we, we haven't been able to find out what happened to them uh, from the damage. Uh, the 1989 solar flare uh, when the storm that, that, that followed it uh, shut down the entire uh, electricity network in Quebec, in Canada. The whole province was shut down for nine hours. Now, uh, people have been warning about this and preparations could be done, but people, society doesn't really seem to be paying attention to the significance of this. We've been basing uh, how, how we're living in a relatively calm period of flare activity. We have not, modern society has not experienced a, a Carrington event yet, uh, but uh, there, there probably will be one. So one of the things that we want to do with this paper is to let people know that about this and we discuss in in a summary we say 
this gives the statistics of the last 90, uh, uh, going, uh, 80, uh, 87 years. We need to go back, but you know, we also need to be preparing for a century events and uh, events that occur every few centuries um and we wish that so we hope that this paper and this data set will be of interest and if you if you're you're interested in this if you have you if you haven't heard of this uh carrington event i i this is a very accessible book uh stuart clark's the sun kings uh, about Richard Carrington. I, if you're interested, very readable. You can learn a bit, a bit more about that. But also try and uh, in, in think about, uh, uh, you know, are we prepared? Should we be better prepared for, uh, for a possible event like this in the future? Uh, so I hope this was of interest and uh, thank you for listening. And uh, if you liked what we were doing, uh, what I was describing, like, subscribe, share, hit the notifications, all of that sort of stuff. Okay, thank you.